in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the best celestial objects to observe with the Celestron StarSense Explorer 114LT. So if you are considering this telescope, perhaps you've recently got it and are wondering what's in store for you, or maybe you're just intrigued, then this video is for you. I'm also incredibly excited to announce that I will be sharing some live video footage of my personal favorite celestial body to observe in this video. So make sure you stick around for that. And lastly, before we delve into it, I do just want to mention that there are other videos on my channel around using this telescope. So I have one about the setup. I also have a full review, and then there's an entire video on the StarSense app if you are interested in those. So with that all said, let's delve into it. Now I do want to begin by mentioning what this telescope is capable of. So it is a 4.5 inch aperture telescope and it is designed primarily for observing the planets and the moon. Now while you can definitely observe deep sky objects, that's not what this telescope is designed for or truly capable of. So I do just want to quickly mention that. And it's important that we set our expectations up front. So let's delve into the objects. At number one, and as you might even predict, my, one of my favorites to observe is Jupiter. So you can get some great views of Jupiter with Jupiter being one of the brightest objects in the sky. So personally, I love to observe the four major moons and observe their movements. So these are the Galilean moons. You can also observe the cloud bands and also the great red spot. The bands are clear and on good nights, you can see that great red spot as well. So it's absolutely terrific to observe. At number two, we have Saturn and its rings. So the separations of the rings are clear through this telescope and the Cassini division is usually visible. Now, of course, we do need to consider the viewing conditions and also just the time of year as well. On clearer nights, you can also see those moons as well. Now, in third, we have the Orion Nebula. So this is another personal favorite of mine and for good reason. You can see the central star cluster, the trapezium, which is nestled in the nebula. So that's absolutely brilliant as well. At number four, we have the Pleiades star cluster. It's also known as the Seven Sisters, and it's just a beautiful open star cluster, and it's just great to take a look at. Now, the cluster's main stars, which are bright and blue, are usually distinguishable. At number five, we have Venus. Now this has been unexpected, unexpectedly captivating for me. Um, you can see the phases, which are similar to our moons, and you can see a kind of interesting dynamic celestial view. And in terms of brightness, it has an un unmistakable glow, uh, which is great in the early evening or the morning sky. And at number six, which I can't really do because I'm holding my phone in the other hand, so imagine that five plus one is the moon now in my opinion this telescope is just absolutely ideal for the moon i'm going to be sharing some footage of me observing the moon in a second but i just want to quickly touch upon what you can see firstly it's very very detailed so you can see craters uh, which are crisp and distinctly visible you can also see the copernicus crater and you, you can see the complex details of this massive crater as well the mare uh, Imbrium, um, you can see that, which is brilliant as well, and also the lunar phases. So you can look at that, the moon at different nights, to basically capture those. So here is the footage. Now bear in mind this is through my uh, camera on my phone, through the eyepiece. So it's when you when you observe through the telescope, it's just much better detail and clarity. I do just want to preface with that. So here is that footage now. Here is the moon through the Celestron Star Sense Explorer 114 AZ. Then there are deep sky wonders. So as I've mentioned at the start of this video, the prim primary use of this telescope is with the solar system. But you can look a little bit further. Um, so the Andromeda Galaxy is one of those things that's just great to observe. Um, and also Hercules Open Star Cluster, so M13. This is a dense cluster of stars and it's just fascinating uh, to, to look at uh, once you are able to locate it. So just on location, I do just want to quickly show you the app itself. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, but this is the app that you get along with the telescope. So you need to download it on your phone, but you get basically get a code which enables you to access all of the features and the functionality. 
Now, one of the best things about this app is that you can press that little star button, I don't know if you saw that, and it shows you all of the best objects to observe on that night. So the moon is usually at the top, uh, and there's no surprise why, having seen how great it is. But you can also see so many other little things here. So we've got the, um, the Messier 39, an open cluster. We've got the, the Coat Hanger, another open cluster. There's Hercules, which I've mentioned. The Bodes Nebula, Miser, Alberio. So there's so many things that you can observe. So that's it's actually quite limited tonight. We must have poor viewing conditions. Um, but these are all we can we can all have a little look at. And the, one of the best things is that there is a section for tonight's challenge objects. So these are, as, as the name suggests, harder to find and you're gonna have to be quite precise. But these are some of the things that you can take a look at. Now I do want to mention that with these open clusters, um, you are going to see those just, you're going to see them in the night sky, but they're not going to be in, in much detail. You're going to be quite zoomed out, but you can observe them, which is always fascinating. So lastly, I want to give you some tips for using this telescope, because I think that's important, because that obviously dictates what you can observe. Firstly, the alignment. Now, bear in mind that this is an alt azimuth mount, so you, it's a, basically it's a point and shoot. So we do have a red dot finder, which helps us to move uh, or sorry identify things in the sky and lock onto objects and that uh, also syncs up with the app so you can have um, you can basically identify targets and there's a, a finder on that on that which kind of has a color coding so greens when you're on it reds when you're obviously not uh, and there's amber as well when you're close so that helps you to ident identify objects um, so yeah just remember that it is a point and shoot okay there's no tracking on this like other more expensive telescope but it is relatively easy to use I find it user friendly um, and I also just quite like the way we can can use it in that way. Next, in terms of the eyepieces, you get two eyepieces with this. So I've got one in there at the moment, that's the 25mm. You also get a 10mm, and then there's also a two times Barlow lens. So I find that the 25mm is best for observing the moon, um, but they're both great um, for different magnifications. Um, with that Barlow lens, you get to double your magnification, so do remember that. Um, but be, yeah, just be mindful of the, all of this with uh, observing deep sky observations as well. Next, when it comes to observing planets, it's good to it's ideal really to focus on the brighter ones. That's where the moon comes into its own. Um, and this telescope does seem to excel in high magnification, so it does give you some good detail um, of those planets. But and as, as I say, the moon mostly. Um, I've touched upon managing expectations for deep sky objects. You do need to understand this t the, the telescope and its limitations. It's great for bright, um, bright celestial bodies, particularly in good conditions. Um, but yeah, you are going to challenge for those more distant objects. Just do bear that in mind. Um, and other than that, just make sure that you use the StarSense app and the smartphone dock. So this is the dock that comes on the telescope. Uh, you basically just put your phone in there. It's very, very easy to do. That just clips out and you slot your phone in. And that helps with the alignment and finding those objects. So I hope this video has been useful. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below and I'll get back to you. With that said, over to you.